Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa Fritz. I'm a naturopathic doctor and licensed acupuncturist here in Austin, Texas. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of patients decide to go on a vegan diet for their health. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of veganism. Uh, some people decide to try veganism, meaning no animal products in their diet whatsoever for philosophical reasons um, and for environmental reasons. And I can completely respect those reasons. Um, and when people come to me and they're vegans for those reasons, I don't try to change that because um, that's, that's not in my scope of practice. Um, that's not what I'm, I'm out to try to do. But when people come and want to do a vegan diet for health reasons, I really try to educate them about uh, why uh, it's good and why it's not so good to not have absolutely any animal products in your diet. Uh, the, main the main reason why people don't want animal products in their diets is because of the way we factory farm our animals nowadays. Um, cows, instead of being allowed to roam around in fields eating grass, which is their natural food, instead are stuck in pens and fed grain, fed corn, because we overproduce corn in this country because corn is subsidized uh, and we just have way too much of it. And um, they're fed a diet that's not their natural diet. They're stuck in pens where they don't get to run around a lot, so they're standing in their own feces all day long. So the feed is required to, uh, they just have to put a lot of antibiotics in the feed so that they don't constantly come down with uh, illness. And then they plump up the cows by feeding them lots of hormones as well so that they um, can get the most meat out of them as possible. Um, and also for dairy cows, they give them hormones so that they make more milk. And therefore, it becomes a more profitable industry. Well, the toll that it takes, not only on the animal's lifespan, but also on our health, is pretty big. And I can completely understand somebody not wanting to buy into, you know, to vote with their dollars and, and, and vote for those, that kind of treatment of the animals, as well as that source of food, which is not going to be as healthy as from a cow who's been pasture fed, basically. And I think we're seeing a big movement here. And in Texas, we're really lucky. We have a lot of local farms that do uh, pasture their animals, their cows. Uh, chickens from large factory farms also never see the light of day. They're raised in drawers, stacked one on top of the other. They cut off the beaks of the chickens so that there's no pecking order in the drawer because there's not a lot of space for that. Um, and they're just not fed the, the proper food. Chickens are meant to scratch the ground and eat um, worms and insects. And that's what gives them their eggs, a high omega-3 fatty acid content. Um, and when they're not allowed to do that, they, nowadays they're trying to market these eggs as omega-3 fatty acid eggs because they put flaxseed in their food. But um, I really question the quality of that flaxseed because those omega-3s are very heat labile. They go bad very easily. Um, so again, when you go to a farmer's market, for example, not only are you supporting a local agriculture, but you're also getting a better quality egg or piece of meat. Um, if, of course, the animal's been pasture fed. Um, there's a whole issue with pork as well, but I think you get the idea. Um, so when we can source our animals that are raised in a way that they were meant to be raised, I think uh, not only is it better for the environment and better for uh, humanitarian reasons or animal rights reasons, but we're, we're getting a better quality product that's a lot more healthful. Um, eating excessive amounts of animal products, on the other hand, do drive some pro-inflammatory reactions um, in our bodies. Um, animal products are high in what we call arachidonic acid, and this drives a series of inflammatory prostaglandins in our body. And so there are many health conditions where um, there's already a lot of inflammation in the body, and we really want to bring those levels down. Um, Fish oils, uh, um, the omega-3 fatty acids, for example, from fish oils and some omega-6 fatty acids from other plant sources um, like evening primrose oil, are um, they drive different types of prostaglandin reactions that are anti-inflammatory. And so eating a diet that is high in plants uh, does tend to drive more of these anti-inflammatory reactions. And um, 
you're not getting that many animal products, so you're not getting as much arachidonic acid, so you're not driving these pro-inflammatory uh, reactions. So the good part about a vegan diet is that you're forced to eat mainly a plant-based diet, and um, you're eating mainly vegetables, which is which are very good for you. I think most of us um, are, are guilty of not eating enough vegetables. So what we recommend every day is five servings of a variety of vegetables. A serving equals half a cup of a cooked vegetable or a full cup of a raw vegetable. So five servings a day. You know, most of my patients, you know, they might be getting one or two when they come in to see me. Um, and it's hard. It's, it's a lot of work to do that because there's not a lot of servings of vegetables in most of the food that we eat out. And most of us eat out quite a bit of the time. Uh, a lot of us say that we have a busy lifestyle and we don't sit and cook for ourselves at home. So it's, um, it's difficult. I think on the con side of veganism, people just don't get enough fatty acids. I think there is a necessary amount of good fatty acids that we need to get. Um, and I think it's hard to get good protein and good fatty acids uh, from a vegan diet. Um, it's possible. I'm not saying it's, it's impossible, but um, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Um, the people that would benefit more from this sort of diet, and maybe even like a short term, maybe like a two or three month course of a vegan diet, be anybody with either severe menstrual cramps, severe PMS. Um, a lot of women's health issues are very inflammation based. And so bringing down the overall levels of inflammation uh, from this kind of diet would be beneficial. Another example of a type of patient that would benefit from uh, going vegan just temporarily would be uh, people with arthritis. But um, because arthritis is very inflammation based, both types of arthritis. And so you can see arthritis levels reduced and the pain levels reduced quite a bit. And maybe in the matter of just a few days when people go on a high plant based diet. Um, I think uh, dairy is another reason why a lot of people go vegan again. Dairy from animals that have been injected with hormones and antibiotics, uh, you know, what is milk but a secretion? And when our body has felt things that we don't want, we try to secrete it from every, from every source. So uh, the cows really get rid of a lot of these chemicals through their milk, and you're getting that in your milk. So it's really important that if you do drink milk or eat dairy, that that be organic. Um, there's still pesticides in the environment. It's still not going to be completely 100% free of pesticides, but it'll have a lot less than a non-organic milk will. Um, milk, there's a lot of issues with dairy. Dairy tends to be very allergenic. A lot of people don't tolerate milk very well. Um, sometimes it's the lactose. Sometimes it's actually the proteins that cause uh, um, inflammatory reactions in the body. So. Dairy is one of those things that I, I really do agree with, uh, with people who eat a vegan diet that it's probably not the best thing for us. I know cheese is delicious, <laughs> uh, ice cream is delicious, but we really need to limit those quantities, especially in people who have a lot of allergies and are making a lot of mucus or if you're sick with a cold or a flu, bring it, completely eliminating dairy just temporarily even can bring down the amount of mucus that person is producing. Um, People with asthma, too, tend to do a lot better and have a lot fewer asthma attacks when they, have, when they cut out the dairy from their diet. So overall, what I recommend is somebody can either go through a short course of a plant-based diet only. When you go all vegan, it's, it's helpful in the sense that it really forces you to broaden your culinary horizons and to learn new ways to cook things forces you to cook at home, which you're going to cook uh, much healthier at home. Uh, restaurants add a, put a lot of additives, put a lot of salt in their food, put a lot of uh, maybe not so healthy oils in their food. And restaurant servings are usually twice, if not three times the size of what, what a serving size should normally be. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of us are overweight in this country. So um, either a short-term vegan diet to bring down overall levels of inflammation or eating mostly a vegan diet, but then when you do have animal products, making sure that you have high quality animal products. And you don't have to have it in every single meal. Um, as much as two or three times a week is sufficient for most people. Again, I would definitely advise you to talk to your own health care practitioner um, to see what is right for you. But um, generally speaking, we can get by with not as much meat as we think that we need. And again, there's no one diet for everybody. 
there's people that have different needs, uh, people with different lifestyles. Uh, athletes have different needs from somebody who is extremely sedentary. People with different health conditions have different needs as well. Uh, some people do better with a higher protein diet and some people do better with uh, more carbohydrates in their diets. So you have to kind of find out what type of person you are. There's so many diet books out there. There's the blood type diet and you know, there's vegans versus carnivores, there's high protein diet, low fat diet. And sometimes it does take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what is the diet that your body reacts to the best. In addition to types of diets, there can be foods, even, even vegetables can sometimes cause, or even vegan sources of protein such as soy can cause inflammation in some people's bodies. Um, anybody can have an allergy or an intolerance to any food at any time. And so as a naturopath, one of the things I do is do some testing to see what are the foods that are causing inflammation or outright allergies. Now the difference between those two is an allergy um, is when the body actually makes antibodies to a particular food. And um, I do blood tests or I'll stool and saliva testing for that. I think the skin tests for food allergies are, are pretty worthless um, and a lot of doctors still do that. Um, so we can do some blood testing for this and then we can also test the blood for inflammation. So sometimes you might not have an allergy to a particular food, but your body still reacts by making inflammatory cytokines or secondary messengers to that food. So that's a different kind of test and we would call that a food intolerance or food sensitivity. So there's a lot of different things that one has to look at when considering what the right type of diet is for them. And if you're thinking of going on such a restricted diet that is a, a vegan diet, you really need to look uh, a little bit more closely as to the reasons why you're doing that and uh, what you think the benefits of that would be for you. Um, lastly, another food that is very common in vegan diets are, is are wheat-based. A lot of vegans survive and fill up on uh, more carbs like pasta and bread. And uh, gluten found in these products can be, it's a very common allergen. I think it's more common than most people realize. And again, you might not have a true allergy to gluten, but you might have an insensitivity or, or, or um, intolerance to that food. So you really want to make sure that you rule out that you don't have sensitivities or allergies to the foods that, that the staples of most vegans. Um, soy is another one. Uh, so you really need to look at a lot of things before seriously considering going on a diet such as that. Uh, thank you very much. Again, my name is Dr. Vanessa Fritz. Uh, my website is austinnaturalfamilymedicine.com. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them below and give us a thumbs up if you've liked this presentation and subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you.